A second access point for Scugog Island is in the planning stages. Courtney McClure, The Standard, Scugog. The township of Scugog is working on a second access point to Scugog Island. The Public Works and Infrastructure Department is responsible for the project, with the director, Carol Coleman, working as the project manager. An environmental assessment, Class EA, was completed in 2007. However, there has been many changes and updates since then. There are about six possible routes listed in the presentation, which was presented to the Council by Director Coleman on July 18, 2022. A notice of study commencement was issued in 2019. Updated traffic analysis has been completed as well as an updated natural environment report, EA. According to the Township of Scugog, the preferred solution for this project is to build two new road links to create a secondary access point to Scugog Island. The southern half of the link will be located off Highway 7A to Head Road, and the northern half will come off of Ma Brown's Road to Pine Point Road. A few changes have also been identified since the original EA was completed in 2007. There has been a change in land use for 2525 Ma Brown's Road. The second access for Scugog Island provides an important connection for residents, including Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation community members, business owners, visitors, and emergency services, as it will provide an alternative route when there are road closures on Island Road, explained Ms. Coleman. As higher volumes of traffic occur on Scugog Island, the risk of road closures will increase, and the second access will become even more important. The department has been meeting with property owners who will be affected by the construction. According to Ms. Coleman, the team has provided and will continue to provide up-to-date information to affected property owners as the planning continues. The general consensus for those we have spoken with is, they support the need for the project, said Ms. Coleman. As for the next steps, there will be an information session available online until August 31, 2022 providing a chance to submit comments and concerns about the development. For more information about this project, you can contact Director Ms. Coleman by email at capital C lowercase Coleman at scugog.ca or at 905-985-7346, extension 120. An information page will also be uploaded onto the Township of Scugog website by the end of July 2022. Billiard Insurance looks to keep growing after celebrating its first anniversary. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Scugog. The Port Perry Billiard Insurance Group, Big Location, recently celebrated their one-year anniversary in the community and are looking to add to their team. The insurance business opened a branch in Port Perry on April 30, 2021. As the business continues to grow, they currently have openings for licensed salespeople and clerical staff. We started from zero and we're doing very, very well. We're getting quite a bit of business and a lot of local business. We're looking to grow even more, and there are good opportunities here. We pay high commission rates to salespeople and ownership in their book of business, for example. We're part of the Billiard Insurance Group, which is a very large brokerage with over 60 branches across Canada, managing partner Don Price told The Standard. The business is also seeking a potential partner to succeed Mr. Price when he retires. We're looking for somebody to basically take over the office as well, down the road, Mr. Price explained. Billiard Insurance offers a wide range of insurance options for customers. We offer, as we say, insurance for everything. We can insure your car, we can insure your home, we can insure your business, and we can insure your life. If you have employees, we can offer a benefits program for them, Mr. Price said. At this stage of his career, Mr. Price said his favorite part of his job is mentoring people. I've been doing this for a long time. I had my own brokerage for a number of years. I was thinking of retiring, and then this opportunity came up to open an office in Port Perry. That's why I'm looking to hire some good young people, help them develop their careers, and then I can go away happy. A current Ajax resident, Mr. Price, had identified Port Perry as a potential place to live once he has finished working. We were thinking of moving up into this area to retire, to be honest. Then I said, Let's give it another five years. I'm not ready to retire. I love it up here, and we're going to move up into the area and retire up here. That's the plan, he stated. The Port Perry Billiard Insurance Group location is located at 76 Water Street. They can be reached by phone at 905-985-7346.
905-985-0367 or by email at dawn.price at thebig.ca. North House and the Uxbridge Coalition Against Poverty. Courtney McClure, The Standard. North Durham. Many years ago, North House started a group called the Uxbridge Coalition Against Poverty. This group is made up of organizations, community members, and volunteers whose goal is to create a township of Uxbridge where poverty does not exist. Their mission is to create systemic change, eliminating poverty using education and advocacy. They also plan to eliminate poverty by working with many community members and the government. Every resident of Uxbridge deserves a safe and affordable place to call home, wrote North House in a presentation they delivered to Uxbridge Council. According to North House, many factors have affected people's quality of life and living conditions throughout the township of Uxbridge. The tornado, COVID-19, and the rising cost of housing prices throughout Durham Region are to name a few. Many people cannot afford to live within the Uxbridge community, especially new or first-time home buyers. In addition, discrimination still exists for people facing homelessness. Together, we can look at short and long-term options to create more housing options, said Mona Iman, Executive Director of North House. North House has been a registered charity since 2004 and services North Durham Region, Brock, Uxbridge, and Scugog Townships. We assist people in our community who are homeless or are at risk of becoming homeless, explained Ms. Imond. North House's top strategic objective is to lead the housing support agenda in North Durham. We recognize housing supply is an issue, housing affordability continues to be an ongoing concern, and creative solutions are needed to begin to meet the challenge, said Sarah Alton, Durham Region Corporate Communications. According to them, the use of house trailers was a short-term solution during the COVID-19 pandemic. This was primarily so healthcare workers could maintain safe living arrangements with their families during the pandemic. Basement apartments and coach houses, such as tiny homes, are two other ways a permanent new housing supply can be provided in existing communities. House trailers and mobile homes are not designed nor intended to be permanent housing solutions, said Ms. Alton. New homes must comply with the Ontario Building Code, OBC, ensuring permanent homes are safe and designed to withstand all seasonal conditions. According to the OBC, all permanent homes must have acceptable on-site water and sanitary hookups, a permanent foundation, and can be safely and appropriately heated. Ms. Alton said tiny homes should not be confused with trailers or mobile homes parked in a resident's driveway. Tiny homes are permanent buildings constructed on foundations with permanent sewer and water hookups, which comply with the OBC for residential occupancy said Durham Region Corporate Communications. In the Township of Leeds and the Thousand Islands, tiny homes are allowed in all zones as long as the zones permit residential dwellings. For more information, visit the Township of Leeds and the Thousand Islands website at leeds1000islands.ca. Ontario expands fourth dose vaccine access to those 18 years of age and older. Dan Kearns, The Standard. North Durham, Kawartha. The Ontario Provincial Government announced on Wednesday, July 13, they are expanding eligibility for a fourth dose or second booster shot of the COVID-19 vaccine to people aged 18 and over. Starting on Thursday, July 14, at 8 a.m., eligible individuals can book an appointment through the online COVID-19 vaccination portal, covid19.ontario.ca forward slash book dash vaccine or by calling the Provincial Vaccine Contact Centre at 1-833-943-3900. Eligible individuals can also book an appointment directly through public health units which use their own booking systems, through Indigenous-led vaccination clinics and participating pharmacies. Appointments are based on availability, which may vary by region, a provincial press release stated. Those looking to get a fourth dose will need to have waited five months since they received their previous booster dose. Expanding eligibility to second booster doses and providing continued access to testing will empower Ontarians to make the best decisions for their circumstances and help keep our communities safe, Ontario Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Kieran Moore said in a statement. Staying up to date on vaccination is the best protection against severe outcomes from COVID-19. 
Previously, the second booster dose was only available to residents age 60 and over, the First Nation, Inuit, and Métis individuals. However, Halliburton, Kawartha, Pine Ridge, HKPR, District Health Unit Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Natalie Bocking said, at a recent virtual information session, there are a number of people who have yet to receive their first booster dose of the vaccine. The key message, if you haven't received your first booster dose, is now is the time to do it. We are seeing increased COVID-19 activity, and we know the benefit of that first booster dose is important, Dr. Bocking stressed. In other vaccine news, recently, the Public Health Agency of Canada announced on Twitter, Health Canada has approved the use of Moderna spike vax COVID-19 vaccine in children six months to five years of age. Are you sure? In times when all around seems to be moving in ways with which we disagree, in directions we resent or even fear, we can respond by fighting or by becoming overwhelmed. As I look at the past few years and to projections of the next, I am visited with the same possibilities of response. We have seen much anger and fear at government and medical policies, and much anger and fear at responses to them. We've seen people being people, wrestling with what to do, reacting from a base of the awareness they have no real control over life. Not just their own life, but society and policy have been seemingly outmaneuvered by a simple virus. We've experienced these things in concept, like in the downturn of our economy, the upturn in interest rates, the attack on family values, the genetic manipulation of our food along with the streamlining of products available so as to prevent us from having any real choice about what we eat and less and less response or actual change from producers and manufacturers when we express our dissatisfaction. There is an elusiveness in the powers that be, and a distance in the effort to reach out, underlain with the appearance of synergistic values and agenda, which don't seem to really reflect our needs. This is how many people frame up life, and consequently feel they are falling victim to it. Whether there is truth in any of this or not, it's what we believe about how it affects us that makes the inner impact. But life is an entirely different thing. If we attach our sense of security to externals, we will always experience shortage and a sense of being derailed or driven in directions in which we are not comfortable. Of course, externals are evidence of the internals of other things, and so there is a value in recognizing what they may offer. In addition, what comes out of us, our external contributions, are evidences of what's going on in us, and so, in the same way, are useful to recognize what we may offer or what we may curtail. We can choose amongst external options or assert one of our own as an alternative in our own lives. Just remember, we must live with how those choices roll out and interact with the rest of the externals out there. That has been our choice, and it was included in the choice at the start. If we don't recognize there are lives of equal value, equal consideration, and equal influence all around, we will have a tendency to try to enforce our style on others. Considering our inner narrative, our inner perspective, and how we will respond is vital to our own peace and the security of others also. This inner life is a place nobody can touch or impact unless we choose to give them permission. Think of it. A teacher may try to teach but no good thing happens until a student chooses to learn. An attacker may choose to do harm to another, but ultimately the one attacked can choose whether this will become what defines them or whether they will overcome inside. Disease may attempt to deform the path of our lives, but how we choose to grow differently will make our lives worthwhile. So when we start saying things like, my life is this way because they did... This happened, I'm sick, so I can't, nobody was, I, I just can't. It often may not be the case, but more of how one has framed the picture and approach to their life. Your approach is based on what you have learned through errors of others and through truths. But just like Galileo discovering the earth revolves around the sun, when we put it out there, not everyone will embrace what we offer. In fact, they may even come against it. But does this make it of no value? I believe it says more about the person who attacks than the one who offers a new perspective. Your opinion has merit, always, but it's only equal to the other opinions. However, 
what goes further is what it offers to help the lives of others. This is what makes it big from a big heart. Right now, there is a reconciliation being offered to Indigenous people in North America by the Pope of the Catholic Church. A true response to the many and varied hurts done to them in residential schools of the past. We must not miss it, because there is an opportunity here. It's being offered by the Great Spirit who created us all. We know Him as God. He is not the one who committed the offense. He is the one who paid for the offense and made a way for great peace for all of us and our pain through His death on the cross. But you don't have to be indigenous to have a struggle with God's offer through His Son. What remains is what we will do with this open sincerity. Will we brand it from the viewpoint of nurtured pain, allowing cruelty from the powers that were, to reproduce in us and deform us with the disease of resentment and bitterness all over again? To truly heal, we must truly recognize the real enemy, the enemy of all of our souls, and that is the devil. He has always attacked the ranks of those who desire to do good, for it is the most effective way to overwhelm and bring discouragement and grief. As indigenous peoples and those who would inject themselves into their cause, let victory over this harm rule. Let it rule by the forgiveness God offers in the opportunity of this moment, so it can truly bring the great peace from the Prince of Peace. How you frame your perspective will be the door that opens to the freedom of your future or the progression of your pain. It's up to you now. Will this be past and no longer part of your today? We can choose to grow differently here to make our lives worthwhile. Not being a victim is about what we choose in our inner life. So let's be sure. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.